Greetings and welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. So today I'm going to talk about the bottomless pit of the mainstream mathematics community's ignorance and stupidity. So let's consider the following diagram here in which we see a definition of the new calculus derivative. And by the way, it's very important. You know why? Because we also get the integral from this definition. Now, the new calculus derivative is based on the mean value theorem, okay? So what you do is you have a point. What you have is a point in the middle here, and it's related to these two points through the horizontal distances. So I'll get to that in a moment. But now the equation of this green tangent line is Tx is equal to delta x plus c, where delta is the slope of the green line and c is where it intersects the y-axis. And guess what? If um, it doesn't intersect the y-axis, then you don't have a derivative in mainstream calculus. Okay, So it's going to have to intersect somewhere, either at the origin or somewhere else. Now, <clears throat> if you take a parallel secant line like I've done here, this red line, then we can find its slope as well, using the endpoints, right? And the slope will be this expression here, f of x plus n minus f of x minus n over the total distance, which is m plus n, right? Now, after cancelling out m plus n from this expression, the difference quotient must still be equal to delta, right? Why? Because the lines are parallel. So this means that any remaining expression, let's call the remaining expression Q of X, M, N, right, has to be zero. If it's not zero, then it's not true that these two parallel lines have the same slope. Now, note that the points, the endpoints of the secant line, of this red secant line, these points here, X plus N, F of X plus N, and the one down here, they're just... Uh, they're just basically denoting uh, magnitudes or numbers if the, if the magnitudes have measures. So Q of X and N equals zero because the slope of the red secant line must also be delta, right? And I, of course, call this an auxiliary equation, right? So now an expression with M or N and possibly X is what this Q of X M N must be, right? So when you take this function, these two points on the function, and you calculate the slope of this little segment, it must equal to delta, right? And the only way it can equal to delta is if all the terms in M and N, some of them might contain X or not, are zero, okay? Otherwise, it's not equal. So now, m plus n is always a factor of the numerator. What does that mean? It means that this here, this m plus n is always a factor of this part here. And the way to see that is to look at this diagram here where I show it for, for Newton's difference quotient, which is that for a non-parallel secant line. So if you look at this diagram and you watch what I've done here, you'll see that you'll end up with f of x plus h minus f of x is equal to h times this expression here, which I'm not going to read out. That means that h is a factor of the left-hand side, okay? So that means that once you divide the expression, you're going to get what's left on this side, which is tan of this, right? So what I'm saying is m plus n, just like h, divides the numerator. And this is true for the historic geometric theorem also. Now, by trying to mimic the new calculus definition using Newton's inferior approach through an approximating non-parallel secant line, we end up with the historic geometric identity, okay, which is this. What does it say? It says the slope of a non-parallel secant line, this, is equal to the slope of the tangent line plus some difference. Okay, it might be positive or negative. And the only time that this Q of X, H can be zero is if F is linear. Okay, and just a quick note, the 
Historic geometric theorem has nothing to do with the excrement known as the fundamental increment lemma on Wikipedia. There's no similarity whatsoever. They look similar, but the the crap on Wikipedia is about infinitesimals, and mine is about slopes and geometry. Okay, two totally different things. Now, given that the new calculus derivative is based on the mean value theorem, we have a seamless connection. So you can take the new calculus definition. And you've got the derivative, or the definite integral, which you see here. It's just m plus n times f prime of x. Okay, and of course you could also look at the the more complex definition, where you have a sum of sub mean intervals. Okay, sub mean intervals. So if you had to uh, look at, let's pull up a a notepad, and let me show you what that means. Okay. So what this means is that you'd have 1 over m plus n, sum of s is equal to 0 to k minus 1 of f prime mu s, okay? And of course, this here will equal to the integral from c minus n to c plus n, okay? So these here are means of the subintervals. So if you take any interval like that and you divide it into equal parts, then each of these has a mean. Okay, Each of these has a mean somewhere in here. And that's what this mu f prime of mu s is. Okay, So that's the more complex definition. But the one I gave you here, is simply to explain to you that you get the integral directly from the derivative definition. But notice that although it's clear in the new calculus over here, it's a lot more complex in the historic geometric theorem because you have this extraneous Q of XH term, all right? In the new calculus, it's always zero, but here you have to account for it. Otherwise, it's not true. So you can just say H times F prime of X like you say, m plus n times f prime of x, because q of x h may not be zero, okay? So from figure one, this figure here, right at the beginning, okay, this figure, it can be seen that neither m nor n have any effect on the slope delta of the green tangent line. And it is also worth noting that there are innumerably many such pairs that will satisfy the difference quotient. Well, how does that, how does that work? That means is, let's just print this out, grab this. This is what that means. I'll show you. Be patient. So it means this. It simply means that if you take any other parallel secant line like that, there's another MN pair that will satisfy that equation, okay, this equation here, this, uh, sorry, this finite difference. So there are infinitely or innumerably many mm pairs, okay? And the only time that there isn't an mm pair is if there is a point of inflection, okay? And that's not a problem. Why isn't it a problem? Because the mean value theorem ignores inflection points. And guess what? The mean value theorem is the fundamental theorem of calculus. If you're not a rare subscriber to my channel, become one. Visit the Discord new calculus server. You can have access to the lobby and also to questions. Okay, so you can post comments and questions in these two. You may not access the other channels because those are for members only. So, uh, I invite you to join, and you could become a member if you pass the 10-question multiple-choice test. That means you need to do a bit of studying. We have it in order to eliminate trolls like Marcus Clivers, Zelos Malins, Jean-Pierre Massages, and all those other morons from coming into the server and causing havoc, okay? So that's why we need you to pass the test, and you have to get 10 out of 10. So... Um, it, also, you, you, can join, you can join on my members-only channel, 
Okay, if you go to any one of my videos and you click on it, okay, like that, and then there's a join button. Greetings. You just click on it. And, and for 4.99 euros a month, you can have access to what members only see, which is a heck of a lot. And they get to see my current projects that I'm working on and future projects and lots of other things because I give them access to a special folder, which is called members only. I'm sorry, you can't look inside there unless you're a member. So that's pretty much it. Also follow me on academia.edu. So academia.edu is this channel, not this channel, this website, where you can read hundreds of free articles that I've written. And uh, yeah, you can learn a heck of a lot more than you've learned in all your school life and university life. And of course, you should know more than your idiot professors of mathematics and teachers. So without more ado, without saying more, without rambling on, Hurry up and join, and I'll chat to you soon. I'm John Gabriel. Goodbye.